Greetings, and welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly D&D 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker and Veosenia. Uh, Joe O'Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar Warlock, and Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. And Kyle Dreyer, playing Baldrick, the wizard fighter. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I got all sorts of great YouTube content over on our channel, so be sure to check that out for more D&D stuff. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. And with that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, a massive battle broke out in the midst of the Octonwald, beneath the boughs of the Evertree, in the midst of the ruins of Etheria. Clashing against Everett Freed and Cena Rinks, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath were aided by the timely arrival of Veo, Pluto, and their new ally, Baldric. The group defeated the abominations created by Everett Freed and managed to slay Freed, prompting Cena Rinks to flee the scene. Now you stand before the roots of the Evertree, before the lair of the green dragon Trothesia, cradling the body that was controlled by Everett Freed, but ostensibly that of Kristoff Engelhart. As Wrath unfurls the scroll of Revify, pause for a moment. Who's this spell going to bring back? Pause for a moment. <laughs> Who's this spell going to bring back? I do not know. The why are you resurrect we just killed him. We did not kill Everfried. He still remains. Who, who is this? Oh, this is uh replacement Sebastian. This is Sebastian's substitute. It's like second string Sebastian. I oh, I don't know who you sense. are, but but <laughs> thank you for your aid. Yeah, uh, he can do the whole like you tell him, you do your thing. Mm. Uh, my pleasure, uh your highness. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Your My name? Baldrick. 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 Yeah, uh, I'm from the Academy. I was uh, sent to help Feo and Pluto secure Sebastian's soul. Well, your help is most welcome. No, we chose him. Yeah, also he doesn't get any treasure. Yeah, zero treasure. They have been difficult to work with. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Okay, that's great. Uh, we are, unfortunately, uh, we, we can have time to discuss and negotiate the terms of your uh, treasure share later, but we have very few... I look at my watch. Uh, <laughs> look at the sun. I look at the sun. Draw a line in the sand. We sand. have very little time. Uh, a dragon is going to be coming here to finalize a deal with us in a moment. And Perfect! You found it! Wait, so, sorry, you have a dragon coming here? Yes, Trithesia oh, yes. is coming back. There, There's a deal that we are making. It's complicated. Um, we don't really know how we're going to get out of it. But also we need we need Kristoff back. Long story very short, Baldrick. The body and the mind are separate entities. We killed both, but we need the... Uh, 
There was another mind that belonged to this bond body. It needs this. It needs to come. It, 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 we need it. Well, how do we know that it's Kristoff's mind, like his br brain? Because when I was down with the, you know, Pluto and Sebastian, there was some weird brain swapping yeah, going they on. Yeah, we were doing some wild we don't, stuff. Uh, we don't know anything about what's going to happen, but I mean, if if we can try, then if it, if if we bring back Everett Freed, then we just would would I recognize what's been done to um, Christoph? Um, are you proficient in medicine? Am I? Are you? I don't think so, but I am going to double check here. Alternatively, you can attempt an Arcana check to see if whatever occult work can, you can detect whatever. I'll, I'll go with that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or or you can start with investigation as well. Can I investigate? Will he Arcana? I mean, either one. Sure. I'm yeah. Both of you can. can... Uh, well, Twenty. Twenty nine. Okay. Wilhelm, examining Kristoff's body, you can see that someone that there is a very thin incision that was made and healed over around his cranium that someone extremely skillfully has opened his skull and used magic to like the scar is there but it's as if it was healed long long ago but you can see that like the way his hair has been cut like it's been kind of buzzed along here leaving the top of his hair which would explain why Pluto never noticed it before um, Pluto not necessarily being having the eye for this kind of detail. Does it look like even before, like when <clears throat> when they were infiltrating the school and they first met Kristoff? Um, that's where Baldrick's analysis concludes that essentially a combination of medicine and art magic was used to seal this wound, um, but that would have been done quite recently, and. This, you have the slightest inkling that it's perhaps been opened and closed several times. Because as you look into the body, the strange thing that you realize is that the head is hollow. As I pull the arrow out of the eye? Yeah, like the you pull the arrow out of the eye and there's no brain there. Instead, if, if you want to, you could pull the eye out and peer into the cranium. I I feel like we'll be wasting a scroll of Rubivify on this. And we hopefully won't need it, but we might need it for what we're here to accomplish. What are you here to... But, yeah, how did you find us? I thought you were saving Sebastian. We are. That's, that's why we're here. So I we've... don't understand. We went to the Druid, and it's not, we can't just bring Sebastian back. We need something in exchange. And so you came here for? A dragon. It's an appropriate swap. The, the dragon... legendary forest serpent, Trithesia, in exchange for Sebastian Crow. Yes, the, the Druid will use the dragon's soul. I mean, I won't lie, if you had asked me like yesterday or any other time, I would have argued with you on this, but we do find ourselves in a predicament where Rudy's son is being held captive by the dragon. I mean, is he being held captive? Or it sounds like he, he chose and knew this was happening, but either way, we need to get my son out of that dragon's grasp. It seems an opportunity presents itself to us. If Pluto and Veo are here to take a dragon, and we need to get your son out of the claws of the dragon, perhaps both things are possible. Mm. Although I've never faced a foe like this before, we're going to need everything we have if that's what we're going to do. Looking around, there seems to be some like, netting. <laughs> There's some trap equipment. The apothecaries <clears throat> were attempting to capture this dragon. 
That appeared to be their intent. We could use that. We could use that. We could yeah, use so that. what <clears throat> what uh, what can we make of the gear that's been left behind then? Um investigating around, they had rigged up a essentially a trap. And looking about, um, I'll allow your investigation arcana to continue. They had essentially rigged a trap around the mouth of the root entrance that looking through the barrels and the um, and the canisters that they have around here contains an incredibly potent paralytic poison. Um, one that they, that with the apothecary, now the green dragon is normally immune to poison. It seems like Judging from the equipment that they had here, that's why they captured the spawn of Trithesia to essentially create a toxin that could poison a green dragon. But a critical component is delirium. It uses contamination as a vector for it. And it currently is not here. No, no, no. It's... It's here, like delirious. Ha- ha- no, no, no. All the the canisters, basically, everything that their plan is all still here. But the critical flaw in their plan was they're that dead. they didn't. An- well, first of all, that they're dead. But second of all, they had expected the dragon to fly directly out of the mouth of this entrance, which it didn't. When um, it came out before. Real, like as we investigate in Arcana, this. Am I able to take the substance and dip my blade into it? Ooh, okay. Give me, um, are you proficient with poisoner's tools? Or slate of hand, I would accept. No. Okay, well you can give me a slate of hand check. 14. The poison Unfortunately, with your application, the poison appears to be rendered inert um, once it is brought out of the canister. Mm. You wouldn't be able to apply it to your weapons, but there are two canisters that someone could open the nozzles on the canisters of these right in front of the dragon and try to incapacitate it uh, using using these these canisters. What you can surmise is there there are a total of five of these canisters. Um, And it's likely that given the size of the dragon, it would need to be hit with a direct dose right to the face from all five canisters in order to incapacitate it using this poison. Well, that's going to be difficult. Also, we still haven't decided what we're doing with Kristoff. He dies. We will retrieve his body, and the Duke will have his burial. I don't know how well that's going to go over in negotiations. It was... we did everything we could. Mm. I can see into his mind, and there is nothing. I'm looking through his eye right now. What you actually do see, though, is that the shot that Veo made into his eye (laughs) dislodged (laughs) something connected to his brainstem. Looking in deeper, the body is still breathing. Interesting. Is there a chance that his brain is still at Altbrook University? And Once we bring Sebastian back, he can perform the surgery necessary. Very well. I did not know that was one of his skills, but we should try. <laughs> yeah, the uh, essentially, whatever Everett Free did to Kristoff, he removed Kristoff's brain and replaced it essentially with some kind of transmitter. So that means Freed's still out there. This isn't over. And Veer's got away too. Uh, rinks. Rinks. I hate rinks. <laughs> but I think we gotta consider in a, in a short amount of time this dragon's gonna be coming our way. Let's, um, I, I pull Kristoff's body off to the side and put some foliage over top of it. 
to okay. keep it safe. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> guys, remember he's here. Mark him with a stick. I put a stick. <laughs> In the eye hole. Oh my God. <laughs> it's sticking out, a little flag. No, Pluto. <laughs> Um, so then, no, we'll hide him. We'll hide him in a hole. Put him in a hole somewhere, in a, in a, in an in a abandoned tree trunk. Just like. Do we need to patch ourselves up before? Oh yeah, sure. yeah. Comes? You will not have time for a short rest, but you will have time to patch yourselves up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take. How much is superior healing? Forty. Yeah. Okay. Um, What's a reasonable amount of like healing potions that I would? brought with me on this. Uh, roll 2d4. Two. You have two superior healing potions. Fantastic. Um, I'm gonna cast my last uh, aura of vitality okay. on myself. I have one, one slot left on my axe. And that, that remind me, it's 70? Yeah. I, um, I stand and gather everybody around and I Explain to them everything I know about fighting dragons. Having never done it, I still, I'm like, I read in the book that green dragons are tricksy and often poisonous. So be prepared for that. And uh, don't try to speak draconic to it. It will find that offensive. And, but I think with all of us here, we've got this. I think that we can together there's enough of us that perhaps we can actually win this day. And you all get 18 temporary hit points. That includes Veo and Pluto and Wrath and Rudy and Baldrick and me. And sorry, just to clarify, we're not killing the dragon. You need to subdue it. Subdue it. That's difficult. I've had a lot of trouble wrapping my head around this. So I totally get it. But the idea is, is that we wanna hurt it, but not kill it, because we need to bring its body and soul to the druid to do the actual killing. Pluto. To subdue it, it will either need to be reduced to zero hit points by a melee attack, or using these canisters or some other magical means that is to your devising. I should use the Lord Commander Seal. I'm in the middle of giving my speech, and Veo <laughs> shoves me out of the way. Shove. And I Quiet, say, you. <laughs> um, I say, I look at all of us, I say, just do your best, all right? <laughs> Everybody, just don't die. <laughs> yeah, I say that bellowingly around. And instead of 18 hit points, you get 20 temporary hit points. Oh. And while you have those, you get advantage on attack rolls and saving throws. Nice. Woo. I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I stand you back up, you're like, keep going. Well, home, there will be a time. It was an excellent speech. Thank you, uh, Baldrick. A pleasure to fight alongside you. Are pleasure you able to subdue a dragon? We will see. I hope for your sake you can. For all of our sakes, uh, yes. your majesty. With that, the dragon appears once again from the trees. Do we have a moment to spread out? Or does it just appear? You can make a move. Or plan anything. But the dragon says, and in that quest, hope is the first step on the road to disappointment. Your bodies will rot into the soil of the Octonwald. Use, and I will make another king's life a part of my treasure. That you think, in the height of your moral arrogance, that you can defeat myself in my own home. I will show you the folly of your ways. Roll for initiative. And you can all make one move. All right, everybody. Good luck. And I'm saying that as Kelly, not as Wilhelm. Like, actually, like, good, good luck, everyone. If there's one thing I've learned about Monty, it's that he really likes running dragons. <laughs> okay. So we all get one move, right? Yeah. 
Um, as Trithessia appears, Wilhelm mutters enough that everybody can hear him, and he goes, everybody scatter. <laughs> scatter. Can you move Theo? I think I just gotta get as far as I may. Are you like, are you able to get up the tree? Is it, to... and is it like a first turn or yeah, is it just that's three too movement? Much. Yeah, just, just as one as move. As far Where as do you it... want to be? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And Rudy? Rudy's gonna stay. Uh-huh. Okay. Rudy's just gonna turn around. And... Trithesia appears 60 feet in the air. Out of a cloak of leaves and trees. Trithesia will be using our new rules for epic monsters, which Ooh. means that um, I only act on initiative count 20, and then I take one action after each of your turns. So roll the initiative. What do we got? For Veo? Veo is 14, and Rudy is 8. Okay, Rudy is 8. Wilhelm? 25. 25 for Wilhelm. Baldrick? 20. 20 for Baldrick. And Wrath? Wrath is 11. Okay. And Pluto is 9. So did you drink your potion of invulnerability? Oh, shoot. I mean, could we have, I, I, sure. I marked it off on I mine. am a merciful DM. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Half damage on everything, remember. Okay. Okay. Wilhelm, as the dragon emerges, you are the first to act. It's in the air, yeah? It is uh, there, 60 feet in the air, yes. Um, I'm going to steady aim okay. and fire. Getting a 22 to hit. The bolt narrowly pierces the <gasps> thick scales oh. of the dragon. Uh, 36 damage okay. as um, I pop out from the giant tree, aim and try to shoot it and get it right in the, the side. Of the uh, neck. Of the yeah. neck. Um, and then I, I can't take the hide action, but I imagine that I slink back uh, against the stump. As the, the dragon shakes the bolt free, and as Trithesia does so, they use their first epic action to breathe deeply. Why is that so ominous? <laughs> Baldric, it is your turn. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so I start my, my hum for my blade song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I'm going to cast Bestow Curse on Trithesia. Okay. That so is that a... That is a wisdom save of 18. And what effect would you like to do? Um, uh, while cursed, the target must make a wisdom saving throw at the start of each of their turn. If it fails, it wastes that turn doing nothing. Okay. Um, as an epic creature... Uh, yeah, okay, I think uh, I think we can do this. Yep, I know how to r- rule that. That's an interesting hmm. uh, way of doing this. Uh, it gets a 17 on uh, the initial saving throw. Okay, so that's so, a big ooh. fail. Okay, so then before each epic action, I'll roll that save mm-hmm. and see what happens. Okay. Ooh, Baldric. Yes. Yeah. and then I'm going to run over here and hide behind this pillar. Okay, so I have to make a wisdom saving throw or I don't get an epic action. Okay. I get a natural one, so I am going to um, use epic resistance. Ooh. This is our new trait. An epic, uh, an epic monster can use epic resistance even if anything states that it can't. So I roll a d20, and on 11 or higher, the bestow curse is simply over. It is not. Oh! Okay, two natural ones in a row. Um, it is Trithesia's normal turn. Uh, they are able to act normally uh, on, on this turn, making the save against the Bestow Curse. So they are simply going to move 
flying over here. Oh no, my cover. <laughs> Got you to a nice <laughs> position to get as many of you in the breath weapon as I can. Uh, I think actually right over here is gonna do the job best. Kristoff. Mm -hmm. uh, Kristoff is, is definitely yeah. like hiding. You know. He's throw him in that hole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just and then you go to Bale. Yeah, the we threw him in that hole. So, I'm on that side. Um, I am going to climb up a, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, actually I will. I'm gonna go to the, the, essentially the corner of the map. Okay. Are you climbing the tree? The, the smaller tree. Okay. The idea is I'm yep, gonna, yep. I, using, I can use feline agility. To, actually, yep. my speed might be enough for the first round. Um, and then I'm going to fire. Okay. I have three attacks on the first. Let's see if I can hit. Uh, that's a 12. Okay, roll all the hits together. Less than a 12. Ooh. Uh, that is a Ooh. 24 to hit. Through the thick foliage, you f snap off some shots, and only the last one manages to connect with Trithesia. Nobody's near, so just that. 23 damage. Okay. And... Can I use my cunning action to hide as a bonus action? Like, crawl a two different spot on the tree? Certainly. Okay. Okay, give me a stealth check. 34. Okay. Um, that just makes it over Trithesia's passive perception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, um, what is the lighting here? It is dim light throughout. Dim light, okay. Yeah. Trithesia, um, wisdom save against the bestow curse, which Trithesia fails, so uh, epic resistance. And the bestow curse is over. Oh, uh, good, good, good though. Okay. It helped, it helped. Wrath, it is your turn. Yeah, that's um, a lot of attacks. Wrath is going to send out Bruce mm -hmm. towards Rudy. And I want to run myself towards Pluto. Okay. And I want to, so part of the familiar touch action is that you can deliver a spell of touch. Yep. Can I cast fly on Pluto and Rudy using? Sure. I'll allow that. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to cast fly on Rudy and Pluto. Okay. Trithesia, no longer affected by the Bestow Curse, takes... Uh, their next epic action. And Trithesia, who is the closest? Oh, it's Wilhelm. Or is it Veo? Although <laughs> Veo's hidden, you're <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it's either Rudy or Wilhelm. Trithesia leans down from the foliage above. Their glowing green eyes forming hypnotic patterns mm. as they gaze at you. Um, Wilhelm, and so Wilhelm, you can give me a intelligence saving throw. I got a ten. Okay, uh, Wilhelm. Um, uh -oh. I really wish I had mesmerized by Trithesia's gaze. You are dazed until you make a successful saving throw to end it, which means that you get an action, bonus action, or movement. One. Of, uh, um, you can't take bonus actions, and you have to choose movement or action. Uh, on your turn. Oh. Yeah, and no reactions either. And I get to make the saving throw at the end of every end of time. your turn. Yeah. Okay. To escape the days. Um, and in addition to that, you also take 20 points of psychic damage. I have resistance to all damage, so that's 10. Okay. What was the bonus from your... From my... It's 20 temporary hit points, and as long as you keep those hit points, you get advantage. Oh, oh shoot, we've been I having didn't... advantage this whole time, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. Pluto, it's your turn. Pluto, um, you have advantage. You have advantage. I, Pluto, chugs his potion of haste, or I cast haste story on himself. Okay, it's an action. And he is going to fly 120 feet 
at Trefe Trefezia. Okay. And I'm going to use my hasted action to take one weapon attack. Okay, at Trefezia? Yeah. Okay. Igniting Ignatius and getting advantage. Yeah. Um, I get a 24 to hit. It does hit. The blade Ignatius! cries out, How I have thirsted to face a dragon again. I'll give it all. I'll give you it all. Oh, that's bad. So many. 24 damage. Okay. So I come flying at Trethesia and I uh, As you fly at Trethesia, Trethesia <laughs> swoops back uh -oh. with their wings and beats their wings backwards right at you with a hurricane force. Uh, -oh. uh And um, I need from you a strength saving throw. That's that's where the hot shot is. Uh, does a 16 make it? It does not. Then I'm going to use my last indomitable to roll a 23. Okay, you succeed your save, but you still take half damage. Okay. So it would have been 30 bludgeoning damage, so it's 15 instead. Uh, and you are not pushed away from the trap. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Rudy, we're over to you. So you're flying. I and can you have fly. And your flying speed is 60 feet. Ooh, how how far away am I? I mean, I... This is 50. So make it. No, that no. is much lower. You just added 10 feet to that, my friend. Yeah, because this is 50. Right, 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 right. So I would move... To I would add 10. Oh, so you need 50 exactly? Okay. No, 60. 60, 60. You need 60 if you have 60. Feet? This is so 50. So where's, where's the 10? Uh, oh, to do 10, that? you just want to do that side. To do 60? Can we make it? Can, can Literally, we make she's it? like right here. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll accept it. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of on that, just on the outside. Okay. Um, Come on kay. up here, Rudy. The weather's nice? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's actually it's a little, very little breezy. breezy. <laughs> it's super breezy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go for three hits. Okay. The damage. Uh, Please that. roll all the hits together. Okay, so that's um, 23. Okay. 24. Mm -hmm. uh, 17. Uh, the 17 is a miss, but you are able. The, your your axe swings twice, crashing into Trethesia's side. Yeah. Uh, 24 damage and 27 damage. Okay. And can I do anything? Trethesia howls, and with their final epic action, they <gasps> unleash their breath weapon. Uh oh. Their nerve poison. That's not good. Mm -mm. So Pluto and Veo, vale, you're right up in it. <laughs> Rudy. So, but uh, right, Rudy and Pluto, yeah, you're right up in it. So I have a ninety foot cone. So I think with the added thirty feet to that cone, do I get as far as wrath? wrath? Yeah, baby! Not quite. Not quite? Okay. No. Um, is there anyone... Where is Baldrick? Hiding. Well, <laughs> behind yeah. cover. Ah, I see. Okay, way over there. Okay, The hiding so is actually working. He didn't die, but he's hiding. Rudy and Pluto? Yep. I need DC 22 intelligence saving throws. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I fail because of my low intelligence. <laughs> I fail and I'm going to use an indomitable. indomitable I'll roll it. I need a crit. I roll it and I get a 10. Nope. I get a 22. Okay. Good job. Those you, so what did you get? I rolled a 10 because I, I, can't, I can't pass it. My, my in my <laughs> zero. Okay. Uh, so. Do I want to roll a bucket load of dice? I think I'm feeling like I want to roll a bucket load of dice. I think we're going to lose advantage, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Rudy is. <sighs> okay. 
This is 16. Uh, you guys, this is 16 d6 psychic damage. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Remember, Rudy takes half. Yes. <laughs> I also feel like I'm going to fail my 75 god. psychic damage. Oh my god. Half of my 75 god. is. Green. What's half of 75? Uh, 37, 37 is rounded down. Yeah. Okay. And Yikes. those of you that failed your save, for the next hour, you roll a d10 and subtract that from your attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws. Jeez. Oh. I is succeeded. There any way to, is there any way to So you take that? half damage. And I would take half of half because I'm also yes. invulnerable. Yeah. So 37, I actually gain. And that is Trithesia's last epic action for the round. So we go to the top with Wilhelm. Um, now, my mind is still addled, and I can only make an action or a move, but not both. And you cannot take bonus actions. Um, I'm going to fire my crossbow. OK. Uh, as best I can, because my allies are next to Trithesia. I'm hoping to get a sneak attack. That's going to be a 27 to hit. The shot strikes true, uh, uh, piercing through Trithesia's scales into their flesh. Uh, that's going to be 25 damage. Okay. Not terrible, but not great. I like to see over 30. It's my preferred. Trithesia responds by letting out another wing blast against both uh, uh, Pluto and Rudy. Uh-oh. Um, uh, so I'm going to need uh, strength saving throws from you both. Don't forget to subtract the d10. Oh, from even saving throws? Yes. Oh my god. Do I get to make a save? Uh, against the days, yes. And it's end? Yeah. 11. 11? I got a 10. You both fail. You take 30 bludgeoning damage uh, and are pushed back uh, away from Trithesia uh, 30 feet. Oh. So Trithesia is basically going to push you both like to the ground. Oh. But you both can still fly, so you're kind of still... What was the uh, DC on the days? 22. Not done. That's... Oh, man. That hurt. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Next up, uh, we got Baldrick. Okay. Uh, where are those canisters of mm -hmm. nerve gas? They're all in the, the barrels and boxes. They're all in the barrels and boxes? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna run up through, through, to the barrels and boxes, mm -hmm. and then from there, you know, I'm gonna cast Hold Monster on Trithesia. Okay, it's a Wisdom saving throw. Mm-hmm. Come on, uh, Trithesia gets a 25. Okay, oh. so she doesn't mind. Um, <laughs> she does not. Okay. <laughs> Boo. Cool. That sucks. All right. <laughs> Trithesia is going to respond by um, making a vicious mockery against you. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Well, that's just me. Feeble wizard. Um, uh, you said wisdom? Uh, that'd be a 16. Oh, sorry. That'd be a 21. Uh, you're looking for a 22, I'm afraid. Oof. It's 20 psychic damage, and you have disadvantage on attack rolls. Uh, until the end of Trithesia's next, uh, until the, your next turn. Did I lose advantage from Bayo's? If you, if you don't have 20. If you don't have 10 hit points. Yeah, once oh, okay. you lose your 10 hit points, you don't get advantage. Oh, okay, so then it's, okay, so it just So you can roll it again, it you can roll it again, because you still have a chance to yeah. do better. Yeah, Oh, my, my spell? You have, well, uh, no, no, your. Well, oh, my save. Yeah. Your save. Yeah. Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that was 20 hit points? Yep. And with Trithesia's normal turn, uh, they are going to fly down uh, to engage Pluto and uh, Rudy in melee. Uh-oh. Um, Veo, it's your turn. And these canisters, are they something we can hold? Yes. And we have to get them to? Yes. Would we be They're about the size of a fire extinguisher. Oh, okay. So we can't hold, like, I couldn't pick up all five. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash down the tree mm -hmm. 
and a cur can grab it yep. across um, as far as I can get, essentially. Okay. Um, That's 60 feet. How much your speed? Uh, it's 30. Okay, so yeah, including getting down the tree. Um, and I'm I, gonna say to get up the tree, I probably used my feline agility. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to dash as my regular action as well. Okay. I, I'm, I'm like. Where are you going? I want to go through the trees, try to get like as much cover as I can. So uh, if I can get to here. Uh, yeah, with a dash, you can get to there. Okay. And I'm essentially just trying to be as sneaky as possible that this dragon doesn't Kay. notice me as I'm getting Trithazi there. is going to tail swipe Polito. Uh oh. Uh, getting a 30 to hit. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, that is 22 points of bludgeoning damage and give me a strength saving throw. Don't oh. forget to add the minus d10. Oh man. Pluto's going to fall soon. Uh, I actually get a 22. Okay. You are not knock prone. I like that. <laughs> okay. I'm a big fan of that. Wrath, it's your turn. Uh, Wrath is... <laughs> Wrath is fine. Wrath is fine with all this. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. We are getting beat up. Okay, I'm actually going to try something. Uh, can I... Could Bruce carry a canister? No. Okay. Then I'm all out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We will overcome. Uh, it's like I can make it, maybe make it close to the canisters. Um, actually, I'm flying right now because I have flying myself. So I'm gonna move. 60 feet. Okay, you fly over. I'm gonna grab one of the canisters. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm gonna start heading towards, uh, heading toward, like heading towards the, the dragon. Okay, you're very brave. I uh, have to be in some cases. And the dragon's gonna try to eat Rudy. No. Uh, it's a cock die. Getting a 25 to hit. Yes. Uh, Rudy, that is going to be 22 points of slashing damage. You take and, yeah. and mm -hmm. you are restrained in the dragon's bite. Oh, no. Uh, and take an additional 10 poison damage. Now, I can attempt to do sentinel. Mm -hmm. Attempt. Um, so a minus 10, a minus d10. I crit. Okay. Does that work, even with the minus two? Yep. Okay, I yep. crit. I crit it with my uh, Sentinel. Oh, we needed that. <laughs> uh, for, so as he goes after Rudy, as, as they go after Rudy, I, I go after the creature, and it's gonna be. Are you still dazed? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 65 damage. Oh my. Okay. Uh, so that driving Ignatius into uh, into the opening that uh, they also has a flying curve. They left, and I'm uh, yeah. Well, that's just my reaction. The, fly, the flying carpet would have been super useful if you <laughs> remembered it. It's not, it's not brave enough for this. <laughs> okay, yes, we yeah, him, no, the flying carpet just fly, flew <laughs> away at the Rudy's, start of the battle. Rudy's been yeah. chomped. Yeah. Uh, so then, what Trithezi is going to do is. Um, use their epic action to um, body slam Rudy into Paluto and attempt to knock you both out of the sky. No! Uh, so Trithesia hits Pluto with Rudy, getting a um, 30 to hit. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the two of you take 20 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh oh. And I need constitution saving throws from you both. Um, oh, wait, that might. Minus the d10. Oh, uh... 12! Uh, oh man, eight. 
Uh, so my my con plus eight becomes a con plus one, so I get a 16. Okay, the two of you crash into each other and are both knocked prone out of the sky and you fall 30 feet to the ground. And I, yeah. Uh, can, uh, reaction with Veo Featherfall? All right, Veo reaction Featherfalls. Does, Do, does it help me? Yeah, it, it's an AOE. Um, I, but I'm at zero to, uh, so Pluto is at zero. He falls okay. to the ground. Uh -oh. He he's he's lay he lays quietly. Oh, those da killing players with falling damage is my it's like my <laughs> signature <laughs> move. <laughs> well, actually, okay, question. With we should fall, know not to fly around. <laughs> by now. Feather falls as if uh, if the creature lands before the spell ends, it takes no falling damage and can land on its feet. Correct. So I land on my feet and then I fall on my face. Oh. But Rudy lands on her feet. Yes, it, it was the damage of getting hit. Yeah, that killed me. I had five health before I got yeah. hit. Oh my gosh, okay. So Pluto used everything to get that one last crit, and then it just opened him up to just like the worst. Just getting body slammed just in retaliation. Crash into. Uh, so that was actually, uh, that was Wrath's turn. Uh, so, so that, that, uh, yeah, so that was at the end of Wrath's turn, correct? I think so. Yeah, so we're at mm. Pluto's turn. Okay. If there's any time to roll 20. Death save. Now is the time. Uh, I succeed, but uh, with a 16. Oh, actually, the minus D10 penalty applies to your death saves. Oh! What? <laughs> okay. What? Let's see. If there's any time to roll really low on a D10, it is... I rolled a nine, so okay. I fail. <laughs> oh, no. Alrighty. Rudy, it's your turn. You are safely on the ground, and Pluto is dying beside you. Oh, but I you can still fly. Take my last healing potion of greater healing and I shove it in Pluto's <laughs> mouth. Annoyed. <laughs> I love, yeah, I no, love No, it's more, it's more like I'm I'm really worried at this point mm, that okay. he's, um, and I just, I bring him up as I give it and I say, get out of here. <gasps> and I kind of shove him away <laughs> as I do so. And um, I'm going to round about Kind of fly up to Trisa, Tr I can't say her, their name. Trithesia? Trithesia. Yep. <laughs> um, and again, more to her like direction to like aim her wrath away. Um, and I just say, come and get me! So you're like trying to... Kind of move On the other her. side? Yeah, on, on the, the other, other side. Uh, on the other side of yeah, Trithesia. Yeah, like Okay. And ooh, let me see if there's anything else I can do. That's it for now. <laughs> Okay, uh, Trithesia is going to claw you as you fly up. Uh, only getting a 19 to hit. 19 is a hit. Okay, well, that's gonna be uh, 22 slashing damage. Oh. 11 slashing damage. Just thank goodness for this potion. The potion is gonna make or break this combat encounter, yeah. I guarantee it. Okay, we go to the top with Wilhelm. Still, Still dazed. dazed. So I'm gonna keep my feet planted and keep taking shots. Okay. Uh, tr you can sneak attack Trithesia because of Rudy's presence. Yeah. So. No, I can't, because that's gonna be a 15 to hit. That is quite the wide shot. <laughs> and then I'm going to try to get out of Dazed. It's an int save. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a fail, so there we go. Very good. <laughs> Baldrick. Got any big guns there, buddy? Oh, God. Doesn't Trithesia get to go after me? Oh, that's right. I yep. forget Thanks. my own rules. Uh, I'm just going to... You're welcome. Uh, Player Mercy? I mean, uh, we, we might as well die. Yeah, I'm die gonna, in fashion. I'm going to go for the wing, uh, the wing slap. Constitution save. If we're going to die, we might as well die fairly. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, that's a natural one, so... Okay. Uh, Another t uh, 20 bludgeoning damage, which is halved, and you are pushed back. Woo! Woo! How's everybody doing? Um, well, in theory, I'm okay. He's okay. <laughs> now we're over to Baldrick. Okay. 
How large is Trithesia? Trithesia is a huge creature. Darn it. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, subdue it, like you trained for. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different than a centipede. <gasps> no, it's uh. the exact same. <sighs> yeah, okay. in concept, that's why we picked the centipede. Okay, okay, fine. You know what? Let's give it a shot then. Uh, I'm gonna cast Polymorph <laughs> on Trithesia. Okay. Give me another 18 plus wisdom. I get a 16. All yeah! right. Uh, what oh. do you make Trithesia? I don't know, because I was going to go with snail, but a snail fall. How, how, how high is she in the sky? 60 feet. Yeah, okay. So anything, she's going to pop back into... Dr- if you make her a snail, Rudy can try to catch her. Yeah. Or you'll have to make her something that can fly. Or like a sparrow. Yeah, but then she'll fly away. I like what's... Oh. We need what has a low dragon. terminal velocity, like an ant? Ants don't Shut. take damage when they fall. Mm, <laughs> it's still away. 60 feet. Uh, a cat. Fine, fine. <laughs> okay, okay. Cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, we'll go into something uh, catchable. Well, yeah, a snail. Can can Rudy catch a snail? Give me like a puppy or something. You want a puppy? Oh. How does he get away? Um, okay, okay. Uh, a a sloth. Sloths are large enough and slow enough, right? Yes, I mean yes. sloth. Sloth. Okay. A three-toed sloth. Give me an attack roll. Ready? <laughs> me an attack. Okay. To try to catch this the the sloth Trithesia. So is that like an unarmed strike? Sloth yeah. Sloth Trithesia. Okay. Yeah. Sloth Trithesia. Uh, and do I do the minus? Yeah. Eleven. I only wanted a 10 to catch a sloth. <laughs> so Trithesia is transformed into a sloth. Uh, um, and Rudy uh, is able to, to catch it. Um, and uh, Rudy, yeah. bring it over <laughs> here. B- bring it to me. <laughs> bring me the sloth. I don't know if I have that much time. OK. Epic resistance. Yeah. Oh, oh god. I get an eight. There we oh. go. Still golden. Still golden. <laughs> Veo, it's your turn. Can we get all five canisters around it, and then like, <laughs> as soon as it turns back, just like... Try. We could try. Um, you know what? Does it still need five canisters to be knocked out as a sloth? I I have an idea. I am gonna... Let's see. Is Rudy flying? Uh, yes, Rudy... Rudy is or, flying. Yeah. Well, no, actually, Rudy was knocked back down to the ground. Down, yeah. Yeah, right below Trithesia. But you still have a fly speed. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I have a rod of... <laughs> of um, a movable rod that I want to use in this situation. So I want to and go And sloths up. love grabbing onto <laughs> yeah. branches and stuff. Um, Cause What's she, your plan she's gonna come rod? back. So if she poofs up, there's an immovable rod. I don't know. <laughs> I just go up to the sloth and I go, click. <laughs> See, the sloth, I imagine too that the sloth is doing like the baby carrier thing where it's like holding on to you, you just like lay it down and you just like shove a rod into its belly and click it on. <laughs> okay. Um, I've done this before. <laughs> but I don't know if I, I get actually. a six for epic resistance. So I've got a sloth <laughs> held under, pinned to the ground by an immovable rod mm-hmm. that is actually going to be a dragon very soon. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wrath, it's your turn. I. You have a canister in your hand. I right? fly over a canister. Does the can does the po- does the canister do damage? No, it doesn't do damage. But we, with sloth physiology, Trithesia's resistances to this poison are greatly reduced. <laughs> <laughs> I shove the the canister in its mouth and just crank the nozzle. <laughs> I love animals, but I hate dragons! <laughs> and I start to empty the canister into the sloth's mouth. Okay. So the sloth Trithesia is incredibly poisoned by this canister. And held down. <laughs> and would you say would you say subdued by it? <laughs> oh, my dragon battle. No, this we were gonna die if it wasn't for this. This is great. 
Teamwork. <laughs> teamwork. This is teamwork. Everybody. <laughs> Those <laughs> slots were hard. <laughs> in, in this, sacrificing in this of show. Yeah. We love slots. They're adorable. But not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Save the slots. We need to get this to the druid now. <laughs> well, is we, it we, still we, every turn it still gets to try to get out? Yeah, or right? how long until it's just a sloth for an hour? But it's paralyzed. Yeah. Yes, like I'm treating the, like, if Trethesia was full size, mm -hmm. I, I ba basically I was ruling that, that these canisters once fully applied to the full size of Trethesia would incapacitate past epic resistance, <laughs> but reduced in size, uh, 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 the the a uh, sloth sized creature taking a full canister. <laughs> we can bring the other four. Yeah, yeah. 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 all they're of us grab a canister. Road canisters, and we're all taking turns. <laughs> okay, it's been ten minutes. Let's give her, give him a dose. Like, do we just give a sloth the amount for the dragon just in case it turns yeah, back? We're, yeah. we're all canistering yeah. us. But does it kill the sloth? No. If it does, then it turns into a dragon again. Then it turns again, into a dragon! And, and then it's five canisters. Sweet. <laughs> I guess you guys successfully incapacitate the dragon. Yeah! yeah. 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 Nice work. Oh man, that nice was good work. Job. That nice was getting work. real well scary. Nice work. <clears throat> uh, is this successfully subdued? Is this sufficiently subdued yeah. for you? I, I feel like uh, the. Yeah, it's a subdued. How long do we have? Pluto, Veo, and Derek. We, we have it. Derek? No, Bald Baldrick. <laughs> Bald Derek. Derek died. <laughs> Who's Derek? We sent some flowers to his family. Pluto, Veo, and Baldrick. You three should go with the dragon to well, bring we, it to your but, druid. The, but we, we, we have an hour to get it to the druid before. But I mean, we, we have, we've incapacitated it with the gas, right? So. And you have the time. How long spell. it would take for it to wake up with the whatever the apothecary's made? It could be a day or more. Like oh. the, the, yeah. And you have uh, the um, teleport spell. Well. It still turned into a sloth. Yeah. It'll be yeah. a sloth for an hour. Yeah, and, that, and that's a lot easier to transport a sloth mm -hmm. than it is dragon. So. Um, and Rudy I Wilhelm do this and now. Wrath can go get Rudy's son back. You can unclick the immovable rod and use it as sort of like a carrying device. Because the sloth is just like... We like still have on. a problem, though. We haven't figured out... What, what are we? What are we giving the, the other part to this? Other part. What other, oh, other part? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So there's the whole giving a soul thing to replace, but then there's also. Yeah, the druid had this very specific request. He wanted something that no one has ever eaten before, and I mean like ever eaten. Not like don't like rack your brain for something that like you don't think you've tried, like it's something that no one ever has eaten before. I, I look around at the ground where there are several dead apothecaries, <laughs> and for a brief moment, Wilhelm's like... Cannibalism. <laughs> well, people have tried that, but yeah, nobody's yeah. tried eating a bug person. Well, no, that still feels wrong. Yeah. Mm. I mean, nobody set foot in this forest in hundreds of years. That doesn't mean that nobody's ever eaten the things in this forest, but it means that perhaps in in a hundred years something new has grown here that somebody hasn't. Has Rat, any... mm. you still do you have that bag full of stuff from the uh, <laughs> the other apothecary, the oh, herbalist yeah. one? Yes, I I have been carrying the samples of uh, of. The other one. Who is the one we haven't met? Bean. Yes. I have the samples of bean. Which um, is the bark and the leaves. The bark, the leaves, sap. sap. Of the ever tree. You got uh, petals? We got petals. <clears throat> what about tea? A lot, I've, I have tea on the regular. It's not floral I, tea. Regular tea. But I don't think anyone's ever eaten the... Ever tree. Oh. That or at sense. least a tea. You know, think about an herbal tea. Like a tea made from the leaves of the ever tree? Yeah, or so like ever -tree petals tree and leaf ever -tree leaves. Tea. Yeah. Mm. Ever tree tea. I would imagine that nobody, I mean, Trothesia guarded this tree 
pretty intensely. It's not like people were free to come and take leaves from it whenever they wanted. As a matter of fact, nobody would have ever taken leaves from this tree. And if they did, would they use them to make a tea? That's very unlikely. I mean, I've made tea out of like dandelions and stuff, but... I've had your dandelion tea. It's quite delicious. It actually tastes terrible. But I'm glad I you was like trying it. to be polite. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's good for you, but not so not so tasty. I'm gonna hand over the samples of bean samples to uh, Vale. Okay. Well, hand it. To, I'll make the the satchel. Oh, of you want to make? Yeah, yeah. And I kind of go and and because I've made tea before for my family, and I kind of put some of those things together, and I say, that's something. And if they don't want it, bring it back. I'll have it. Okay. 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 Well, that would be with the incapacitated sloth dragon and the Evertree tea. Pluto, Veo, and Baldrick are going to make trails? What's the plan? Yeah. Let's. We have the tea, we have the dragon. Where is this druid you need to. Where did we go again? Oh, it was just... A forest? It was north of uh, Drakenheim. Drakenheim proper, um, in the forest behind, it, in the wooded areas, you not too far from the city. No, it's literally like, oh. like it's part of Drakenheim. Oh. You would know the teleportation circle in Emberwood Village. Yeah. That if you, have, if you still have your seventh level slot. Uh, I mean, that's a fifth level slot, isn't it? Teleportation no. circle? No. Yes, if, oh, you, yeah. if you know both teleport and teleportation circle, yeah, you could take either. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll do, we'll use teleportation circle. Okay, if you head to head to Emberwood, and what are Rudy, Wrath, and Wilhelm going to do? I need to go find Corbin. I agree. reach out to Kippers, and I say, you will meet us at the entrance of the lair of Trethesia, and you will take us to those that entertain her. Kipper's replies, something happening down here, something strange, very dangerous down here. We are coming. Your master is coming. I'm going to start trying to disarm the uh, trap that to the entrance. Okay. Whose journey shall we follow? I was about to ask you who we're switching to. I mean, I think it's about due time that we resolved the, uh... Okay. <clears throat> we'll find out how Rudy, Wrath, and, um... Wilhelm. Wilhelm deal with the lair of Trithesia next time. Mm -hmm. But for now, we will proceed back to Drakenheim. And, uh... Kelly, you can uh, take a seat for now. Okay. As you Hold arrive on. back in Emberwood Village, um, there is an important distinction that I do have to make. Teleportation circle has a casting time of one minute, mm -hmm. which means that you have to break your concentration on polymorph, which means Trethesia turns back into a dragon. Ah, uh, okay. But you pump Trethesia full of those canisters, so the dragon is incapacitated. Okay. So you're able to drag the dragon through the teleport. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. Wrath knows the teleportation circle spell. Could he cast Teleportation Circle for them? Sure. Would that work? Yeah. No, we still get... Because I don't think... I, that I don't way have you to still have a portable a form? A portable, yeah, a portable okay. sloth. Okay. So I'm going to cast my... Um, one of my pack... Yeah, my last one before... And then, so Wrath is going to open the gate, because I assume he also knows the Emberwood Village. Yes. You still may need to prepare for Trethesia returning to her dragon form but incapacitated because it'll be a little bit longer than an hour to get from Emberwood Village to the Overlook. Okay. okay. To the Shrine of Morrigan. Yeah. Right. Could you re up it? Can you just like cast Polymorph again? If I had enough spell slots, but and we burned, we, we burned through up. those uh, getting there. Can you upcast um, them? You can upcast. All right. I guess I could upcast or like, is there a wagon we can bring? Yeah, I think you yeah, can. Yeah, like we can bring a heart. The gawking villagers of Emberwood Village sh shockingly see Veo, Paluto, and Baldric Hauling. emerge from the portal hidden beneath Emberwood Village with a dragon in, with, with a sloth that you load into a wagon that promptly transforms back into a dragon. A dragon wagon. 
<laughs> we we put the straps over it, but we make them very loose. So when it goes, it like <laughs> yeah, up. right into it. And I do the rod over it. Oh, I guess it is not gonna move with that. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I have it on me, like just in, ready. Just, you just just don't move. <laughs> And I go, nothing to see here. It's Dragonheim. Dragon. It's Dragonheim. Go it's fine. Dragonheim. Business. <laughs> okay. As you head towards the city, um, towards the grove, where the Shrine of Morgan lies, along the road, you pass by a group of followers of the Falling Fire. And among them, is someone who you know very well. Amongst the pilgrims, a throng of pilgrims, is Lucretia Matthias. And she approaches you, Vale and Paluto. It has been some time, but I knew you would walk this road with such a prize in tow. Do you know why? Do you know why we are here? Of course. And I was disappointed that when it happened that you did not seek me out. I have waited for some time for you to honor the compact that we had made. Please, I would speak with you, Polito, alone, if I may. To be totally honest, we are a little tight for time. However, yes, I will graciously give you. May I? May I have a moment? Just remember, we're doing this for Sebastian. Yeah, be brief. <laughs> she leads you off the road where. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I gotta do it. The not far is a small roadside shrine to the Sacred Flame. And she says, and, we, and as she leads you to the shrine, she says, you hold the blade of St. Of Saint Vitruvio and his shield. She gestures to the amulet that she wears, the phylactery of St. Vitruvio. And producing, wrapped up, she produces the helm of St. Vitruvio. Some time ago, we had bargained and that you would bring the rod of St. Vitruvio, that you would retrieve it. I believe that was a, a mission that your fallen friend went on, Sebastian. Did he succeed? We, we got it, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we did. And no disrespect, Lucretia, it was not, you know, uh, our absence of returning to you was not a conscious choice. I feel we have been thinned in our uh, pursuits, we f are, the few of us have been pushed to the, rolled out like a, like a way too thin pancake. Mm. And uh, borrowing from Bayo's, uh, <laughs> Bayo's terminology. And so it was not a slight against you. You, your th coming to you did cross our mind, at least mine, um, for I know what you hold. I just, I was not sure if, if we were, if what we asked was, was fair. Prince of Caspia. You, today, defeated a great dragon. 
through the help of your allies, but though it almost cost your own life. But you bear the relics and have the makings of a mighty champion. Your fallen friend is gripped in a terrible darkness in the Shadowlands. You see him? I know that if you proceed on this path, You will not bring him back. The Sebastian that you raise with this blasphemous ritual that you are about to perform will forever be a corrupted thing of darkness. Already, the spirits of the Shadowlands grip his spirit, pull him deeper, for he is one who is heavy with guilt, regret, anger, and sorrow. And as his spirit walks the Shadowlands, it traffics with the demons that would attempt to pull him into the abyss, transform him into a creature of utter darkness. If you do this trade, you will damn him. What do you... What do you propose I do? His regret, his... his guilt, his sorrow, all I know is that he hasn't been able to atone for it. His cycle isn't finished. And the only thing I can do is give him the chance to complete his journey. Mm -hmm. Things were not, things were not done. Nothing was completed when he was viciously taken down. Indeed. But I say to you that it need not be so, for within the deepest darkness emerges the brightest light. And in saving his soul, you might save your own. What would you do to bring him back? I believe I would do I would do anything. Mm, it seems that you say that, but your blade knows that not to be certain. Paluto, do not do this. If you choose this, I instead offer you the path of righteousness instead. For instead of being the death of a dragon, let one rise. Instead of going through with this, bring the rod of Saint Vitruvio. Here, I will give you the helm. I will give you the phylactery. You will be clothed and garbed in all the armaments of that great saint of the sacred flame. And then you and I, we will go and we will find a shard of delirium in the shape of your soul. And you will find the light of the falling fire. Be made a champion, a champion that saves not just this world, but all worlds. And in so doing, with the relics of Saint Vitruvio, rather than damning 
a dragon. Raise one. Together, you and I could go to the cathedral, adorned in the relics of St. Vitruvio, armored in faith, sworn to the sacrament of the falling fire. You and I could raise the fallen dragon Argonath, gilded in light. We will use the relics of St. Vitruvio And together, I will go with you to the Shadowlands. And we will bring back Sebastian, but not with darkness, but with light. Truth. But that is for you to choose. I offer you the path of light, a true destiny, one born of righteousness where your lambent soul will find its fate and raise up not just that of yourself, but your fallen friend. Or you can continue on this path that you walk, that of damnation and darkness. It will not be an easy road. If you go with me, you will be an enemy of your... Of that erstwhile king, all the work that that king has done will be undone, for the Illyrians will want to destroy us. But armored with you as our champion, astride the relics of Saint Vitruvio, and mounted upon the golden dragon Argonath, you will be a champion of the falling fire, and the might of Illyria will break before you, wielding the golden blade, Ignatius. I have seen it. It is a future that could be. One where all the peoples flock to hear the word of the falling fire, and where I, in the twilight of my years, pass the mantle and the guardianship of the falling fire upon you to be a champion for the truth and the light. You have done grave things, but in this you would be the greatest champion the world has ever known. Sometimes it feels like everybody knows who I'm supposed to be but me. The sword knows, you know. If I walk this path, am I, am I really the savior of Drakenheim? Am I really the walking essence of St. Vitruvio? Am I really the hammer that breaks the Illyrians? Or am I just me in all of that? In that armor, in those items? Aren't I just still me? No. In that, the man who was Paluto Jackson that arrogant man of sin and vice will be burned away, leaving only behind a pure champion, an instrument of the falling fire's divine will, and nothing more. A glorious hero. One that this world sorely needs. I really like you, Lucretia. I have so much respect for you, and I think what you're doing, I think what you do is truly what you believe is right. And there's nothing more that I want 
and then to be a champion, riding a dragon, fighting back the Illyrians. With the most armed by faith and the greatest <sighs> artifacts that has ever born. The, they are, they are one of my kin's oldest enemies. Yeah. But then I start to think, then who am I? Because what got me here was sin and, you know, playing it fast and loose and killing things. And I just think that, I think you're looking for anybody. That's what I think. I think you're looking for somebody else. Anybody else. But I don't know if you're, th I don't think you're looking for me. Because who I am, who I am is the guy that had to throw myself at a dragon to make sure that my friend had a chance to come back because I screwed up. And I think that's, that's who I really am. I'm not the champion that you think I am. And I think that the, that power you offer me, that's, that's what you think I want. But what I really want is I want Sebastian back. And I know you want to give it you, you want to give it to me, but whether Sebastian loses himself or I lose myself, it's something bad's gonna happen, but this is the path that I know I have to take. So I, very well. number one, you should have brought this to me a little bit earlier. That would have been nice. But number two, I got a sloth to kill. And I humbly hope we can speak again. When you see the monster that Sebastian becomes by what you have wrought, perhaps then you will reconsider and I will be waiting. I really hope you're wrong, and I know you're usually not, but I really hope you are. Well, time will tell. Speaking of time, I run back to the cart. Sorry, 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 I got sidetracked. We were just talking about animals, birds, things of that nature. Ones we can eat. You know, yeah. along the way. You know, I used to bird watch with Wrath, your uh, your other friend there. He prefers to look at the uh, the. Uh, I believe his favorite was the flat-chested red-headed bird. <laughs> I myself always prefer the uh, yellow-winged whooping finch. But mm. anyway, are you done with your talk? I just eat birds. I don't eat them. Some are pigeons. Never pigeons. Veo, pigeons are our friends. Veo, I gotta ask you: Are we doing the right thing? Yes, you weren't asking me. <laughs> and you know what, you'll have a say in a few more, in a few more He needs uh, more combat. experience. Yeah, body. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you need to it? gain some more reputation before you're able to have a Dragon Force discussion. I think we're doing a thing that's right in our eyes. And if we, we can't please everybody, what is right? I think it's right that we do our best to bring Sebastian back. She offered me a path. She offered me a path that led to glory, greatness, Sebastian back, fighting off the Illyrians. Sounds like she offered you a dream. Man, something 
glittering in gold. But you know as well as I do, there is no gold in Dragonite. What I've learned... I mean, there's some, some gold. We <laughs> steal some horse of gold. We st I stole... Actually, there the is roads, some gold. The roads are not... <laughs> the roads are not gold. Our path is not gold. Our path is sometimes grimy. It's sometimes hard. It is very much a path not... Not always will people look upon our path as that of heroes, but... We are going to do what we can to save Sebastian and save this place. And not everyone's going to understand and not everyone's going to follow the same path. But it's our path. I feel like if I... I feel like because I'm doing it with you, I feel like it's... I feel okay. I want to thank you for being with me. I don't think I could do this alone. I would never make you do anything like this alone. And I know that if something were to happen to me, that you and Sebastian would do the same. Yeah. So we do it our way, Pluto. <sighs> you make the long journey around Drakenheim, skirting the outskirts of the city, before you arrive at the Shrine of Morgan, where the ancient Menhir stones surround an old altar caked with ancient blood. There, the druid, Yogain Ghostweaver, awaits you with the prepared body of Sebastian Crow laying upon the altar. Yogain set lowers his gaze, the black-haired elf with his angular features regards the creature that you brought before it. Is it still polymorphed? Oh, it only lasts an hour, the polymorph, okay. so. His eyes widened then as you <laughs> roll the wagon up with the ancient dragon. I guess I could recast polymorph. <laughs> Just the surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yogain lays his hand on the dragon and says, I remember when this dragon seized Etheria made that old elven home its lair. I am glad, poetic even, to be the one that ends it. Are you, are you elven? Yes, Yogan and Ghost Weaver is an elf. I just saw your ears, I'm so sorry. Yeah, continue. I'm really bad at noticing features, like the head thing, I didn't miss it, totally. Master Dwarf. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Lay the, we will lay the dragon before the altar, matched its, and he instructs, with your help, he has you kind of <laughs> place the dragon before the altar, like side by side with Sebastian. Question. This dragon's pretty impressive. Is Sebastian gonna get like a bump up in stats or like soul? From this? Yeah. Do we get, is there going to be extra? Yeah. Is there extra dragon <laughs> extra left over? Left over. Is there a dragon buffer at the end of this? This is really magical. Sorry. We're just talking specifics. Yeah. You have, <laughs> what do you have done with this dragon to incapacitate it? Its body will be but a shell afterwards I guess not so yeah okay that's it, fine I guess the, the 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 poison kind of makes it equal yeah okay, okay yeah yeah that's fair we just want it back we're just things. interested the druid seeing the ca the, the case of the the dragon says takes out an obsidian dagger and reaches beneath the scales of the dragon, finding its blood veins to drain its blood. He proceeds to take a stone backhoe and around the menhirs and the altar of Sebastian. He begins carving in the dirt 
with the hoe. Runes. Connecting the menhir stones and the altar and tracing around the body of the dragon. And as he goes to the limbs of each of the dragon, uh, of each of the dragon's limbs, he cuts a scale and pulls out a blood vessel, sets the vessel against one of the grooves that he's dug with the runes. The blood begins flowing out of the dragon and into the grooves of the runes that he's drawn around Sebastian. Ignatius says, this is dark magic. Are you certain of this? Ignatius, I am not certain of anything except that I must bring him back. He is the, there is one other that I could not and I live with that regret. Very well. That is a truth that you bear and a truth that I will accept. Do I recognize what's happening here? What, uh... Give me an arcana check. What method he's using? 13. 13? He is casting a very powerful spell. one which you can identify is a powerful necromantic ritual. Okay. <laughs> so how's it going? Do we need, do you need me to push anything? Pull anything? Do you need Before your... this, we, you asked to, I asked for one other thing. Yeah. We, I think we nailed it. <laughs> I hope so. Um, so we, well, one of our friends had gathered leaves and petals and from the what's the tree ever tree ever i want to call it the elder tree yeah, we're not yeah. ever tree and we made it into and i hold up like a tea bag a tea his eyes go wide he says as he smiles ever tree tea i have tasted ever tree tea before for I grew up underneath the boughs of the ever tree hundreds of years bef ago before Vladimir von Draken came. But I have not tasted that in hundreds of years, and it is my favorite tea. I will accept this. Yes. Thank you, thank you, because we have no backups. We are <laughs> for, not prepared. I am we tried the backup that, accidentally. <laughs> that uh, I have craved Evertree tea for hundreds of years and been unable to return to the grove for fear of this dragon. So you have done me a great service, and perhaps one day I will return to the ruins of Etheria, where I may use the guidance of Morrigan to quell the spirits of my fallen siblings. Yes, they... Did we see them? We didn't. Yeah, we didn't see them. We didn't see anyone. Indeed. He continues bringing out more of the blood of the dragon and says, the poison that was used was strange. May have some unpredictable effects of a part of the ritual. But oh no. <laughs> we totally forgot about that part. But I will need perhaps a bit of a surrogate vessel then to help bear this part of the ritual. Yeah, so Baldrick here is actually <laughs> an amazing surrogate. Yeah, he's very magical. Yeah, he's super magical. He actually did most of the work here. So mm. yeah. tell him, Baldrick. I, this I did not agree to. <laughs> uh, what is it you need? Master Druid. I will need someone to offer up some of their blood and body to act as a conduit to cleanse the dragon's poisoned blood. I have the strongest blood. And the most body. Yeah. Check out this body. But your body is very 
very strong, and it's it's very your well magical done. energy that I'm really feeling. Give me your hand. Blood he off. takes the obsidian knife. No, I have the stronger body. And says, "This will hurt." <laughs> I hope so. He cuts into your hand. Ow. And then brings you to put the wounded hand where he rips a scale off the dragon, just over where its heart is, places your hand against it. You will hold here through the ritual. The pain will be excruciating, but hopefully this will compensate for what the methods that you use to bring the dragon here. I am going to chug a healing potion. Okay. Pluto, do you need me to immovable broad you against the dragon so you don't? Can I have the immovable rod as like a chewing stick? Like sure. I, oh, I'll get you a regular yes, stick. This is why immovable okay. rod. Don't drool all over it, Pluto. <laughs> I need the brace stick. <laughs> you, uh, you knew Sebastian well in life. I will need someone to help call to him as well. I can, me. Okay. They, they, were, they were childhood friends. Yeah, I've known him for forever, and he'll know my voice. All right. And if you can provide what magic you have, that will certainly aid in this process. Of course. Very well, then. The druid begins to encant the ritual, speaking ancient words and calling out to the Morrigan. Morrigan... I, your humble servant, offer you a trade in life and death. A great soul of a mighty dragon in exchange for a wayward one lost in the Shadowlands. And a vessel again, anew. Life for life, soul for soul, blood for blood. So it is offered so it is exchanged, and so it is given. Morgan, who spins the fate of every mortal. Morgan, who perches on the shoulder of the dying. Morgan, whose ravens fly the shadowlands, pick over the corpses of the fallen foes. Morgan, who knows every death. Morgan, I implore you. Soul for soul, blood for blood, life for life. I call for the spirit of Sebastian Crow. Veil, vale, call to Sebastian. Sebastian, Pluto and I are here to save you. And I'm pretty sure if you come back, he's gonna kiss you, so hurry it up. Okay. I need a charisma <laughs> check. Um, yep. Um, do you have proficiency in perfa- persuasion? I do. Okay, give me a persuasion check with advantage. Uh, that is a 31. Okay. Ho ho! You feel the presence of Sebastian's spirit as you call out to it. Soul for soul. Blood for blood. Life for life. Repeat the words. Soul soul for soul. Blood for blood. Life for life. Baldric. With your magic, you can aid this. You can give me an arcana check. And if you wish to add a spell to it, you mm-hmm. can add the spell's level as a bonus to your check. Okay. I can add that after I roll? No, you gotta commit to it first. All right, commit to it first? Okay. Uh, I will add a fifth level spell slot to this. Okay. You said Arcana? Uh, yep. Okay, uh, so that's 16. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, 18. All right, Pluto, Ah. and repeat after, repeat the mantra. Blood for blood, 
Life, soul for soul, life for life. Pluto, the toxic blood of Trithesia runs through your own veins, racking your body. How do you endure the pain? Um, I keep repeating Sebastian Crow's uh, famous catchphrases. Uh, I'm Sebastian Crow. I'm here to rescue you. Hi, my name is Sebastian Crow. I'm here. Uh, hi, my name is Sebastian Crow. You've probably heard of me. Uh, 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 what's the worst that could happen? Oh, this isn't the worst thing that could happen. There's much worse. Hi, my, my. And I'm, I'm repeating all of my favorite catchphrases of uh, Sebastian Crow. All right. Give me a constitution saving throw. And roll the save first. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Uh, 23. OK. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, it's the worst that could happen. Oh. All right. Oh. The blood boils around you. The life dragon's for blood. Life for life. body. Soul for soul. Shudders. You see Sebastian's corpse shudder and shake <gasps> and rise above the altar as the blood rises up, forming runes in the air. The dragon's blood as Sebastian's corpse shudders and snaps, the blood flows around in the shapes of runes of death and life, flowing up into Sebastian's nostrils. And you can see the dragon's blood flowing through all of his, his veins again as color begins returning to his body before the blood flows back out through his ears out his mouth and no nostrils as the druid begin continues the chant, blood for blood, life for life, soul for soul. And as the final incantation reaches its zenith, that is where we will end for the, for the day. <laughs> Wow! Success. We're doing it! <laughs> Making it work. Do, 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 do. Making it all. You've had your time away. Come back. Well, we will return to one last glimpse of the Shadowlands as Sebastian is called back to the realm of the living. Next time. But a big thank you to Jill. Kyle and Joe, as well as Kelly. Woo! <laughs> we did it. Go team. Subdued the dragon. Go team. Subdued the dragon. We and then murdered it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And a big thank you to our DM, Monty. Woo! Yeah, yeah. For managing all of them. And all thanks to you, Kyle. You do a ton of great work for us, and it was lovely to play with you these, these past yeah. couple, couple yeah, sessions. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Yeah. I I I I'm, I think we'll be able to say our goodbyes to Baldrick from there, and maybe we'll have you guest star again soon. He has a class to teach. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, our videos and live streams are made possible because of our amazing Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we do, please consider becoming a patron by following the links right down below. Uh, and uh, we want to give a big shout out to some of the amazing creators that uh, produce some amazing, uh, talented work that we use in our tabletop games. Uh, Dwarven Forge with the amazing terrain, uh, Hero Forge and WizKids with the miniatures, the player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, and the music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts, including What's the Worst That Could Happen? <laughs> Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. We also got an awesome Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so another little incentive to join there. <laughs> With that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Draconine.